Okay, so this is the gooseberry bush we've got. How long has this been here, Mum? It's been about three or four years. Three or more. four years. And for size comparison, that's the kind of space it's taken up. So what do you do to protect it, Mum, from birds? Well, I made this uh, crow out of a milk bottle. The four-pointer. Four-pointer milk bottle with tape all over it. Duct tape all over it. Put it up high so the foxes don't get it. Yep. And it swivels around with the wind. And it just deters them. It deters all the birds from the fruit that's near it. And it normally be a bit higher than that, but... Um, seems to work. And what, how much fruit did you get off this bush this year? How much was on it? Quite a lot. Quite a lot of fruit. And in previous years without the um, crow? Nothing. So you didn't get anything without the crow, but with the crow you get plenty of fruit. There you go. Yeah. So you don't have to cage this particular bush. Um, a crow, <laughs> as funny as it looks, will help. So I don't know if you can buy these. You might be able to. You can, but this is cheap. This is cheap. As an on allotment, you get a cheap one. So yeah. what about other fruiting plants that we've got? Loganberries. Loganberries. So we've got, let's go around to the other side. You'll be able to see it better. <coughs> so this is our loganberry plant. Similar to raspberries, but they have a much longer fruit on them, much bigger fruit. So what happens with this one, Mum? You've obviously stringed it up so it goes along. Yeah, that's the next year's fruit. Yeah. And the next, the following year's fruit comes up from the centre. Yeah. And I train it that way. Right, okay. So you train it one way and then you train it the other way? Yes. Okay. And also the crow did their job. And the crow helps again. Yep. So no fruit cage needed again? No. Nope. Excellent. So that, that takes up the um, fruit cage issue, doesn't it, really? If you've, yeah. got, if you've got a crow, you can deal with it. Or yeah. another way to um, deter them. People use kites and all sorts, don't they? Yeah. Or if you <laughs> haven't got a crow, you just put netting over the top. Or so netting that. just over the plants themselves, yeah. instead of a massive fruit cage. Mainly to stop the pigeons. And what about the raspberries? Because they come up regularly. Yeah. And they spread. They're a bit of a problem. Yeah, well, summer ones spread quite badly. Yeah. But the autumn ones, you just cut back in winter and they seem to come from a central point. Yeah, so the, so the autumn ones are not too bad for spreading. No. Um, now, you grew them a few years back, didn't you? Yeah. Getting on a, on a few years back, but now we've got just the Logan Briz now. Yeah. So the autumn ones are recommended if you're worried about them spreading too much, but the summer ones... I imagine the crow do their job on that, protecting them as well. Yeah, crows in the, in this area are different areas are different problems. I mean, we have a problem with squirrels as well. Sometimes um, all them trees are up there. They've got nests and they come along and eat eat uh, eat some things. Yeah. So. They've so got a cherry tree there. Yeah, the cherry tree was just explaining earlier, which we cover the whole tree in a big net. Yeah. Now this plot has got a cherry tree, an apple tree, another apple tree, a Victoria plum which we only planted the last season, and we've also got another apple tree there. Now out of these fruit trees we only protect the cherry tree at the end. And just before the fruit goes red we put a big net around it, around the whole tree and protect it from the birds. Um, now the birds, sometimes you might get the odd one find a way in, um, but we try to cover it properly so they don't actually get in. Um, we've had one bird in there and it's found its way out itself, so not too too bad with the birds. I would say the thing we, with trees, we tend to have to spray them in the winter with what you call a winter wash. And we will be doing ours in a few weeks time. You're supposed to do it twice, once in the autumn, late autumn, once all the leaves are off, and once just before the buds start appearing. So we'll probably do a video on that anyway. And that spray really helps with the cherry tree. Um, it makes a big difference, so well worth doing. Victoria plum tree. This is a small one at the moment. 
How small can you keep them? Because Sarah's plum is quite big. But your plum here, that we've got on this one, it was only put in last year. But can you keep them smaller? Yeah, you can keep them trimmed back. Yeah. Or, yeah. But base wise, you're looking at about a square metre of ground, aren't you? Yeah. To, to keep it, and then you can keep it. The branches obviously go over that, generally. This is our plum tree, Victoria plum. And it's fairly big. We need to cut it back a bit. As you can see, it's it's not massive, but it's quite big. And we've also got a pear tree. It's better to see these during the summer, really, than they've got the leaves on. So strawberry plants you need to cover from birds and squirrels, and I've built this frame. Which really helps. Easy to get to. Um, but yeah, you do need to protect your fruit. So if you're interested in the fruit, um, hope this helps you. Um, Tony C. Smith, um, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to his channel in the uh, description below. Have a look. Cheers, bye.